Hey, hey, everybody on Herd Wall Radio. This is Josh Fisher. I'm here with Elise Bauman and Natasha Negovanless. 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 It's I, tricky. Yeah, yeah, no, it's, it's super. Uh, yeah. But uh, I have both of them here. They're from the cast of Carmilla the Movie, available on full screen. You can watch it now. Uh, super exciting. So you guys got to make a movie after doing the series. Let's talk about it. <laughs> let's talk about it. Let's now. let's just dive let's, in. Oh, let's open up and talk about it. But um, for real though, I mean, like, what was it like? Uh, what was it like jumping from the series to a movie? I mean, how how did that change? Yeah. Well, um, this wasn't the first feature film that we had worked on as actors, but this was the first time that we played these particular characters mm -hmm. uh, for a bigger screen. So it was really fun to get to explore these characters um, over a few years. Um, in, in the digital realm, and then to get to see them in a fully realized universe and to get to explore them in a more um, in-depth kind of way and, and see them in their intimate moments. Um, so, yeah, it was just, I mean, no one, no one would have seen this coming as well. We started as a very, very small web series. Um, out of Canada. Out of Canada. Right? Yep. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah, it, it was pretty nuts because the first season of the show three years ago when we filmed, um, it, it was this tiny little non-union web series. We were filming it all in one house. We shared one bathroom for the whole cast and crew. <laughs> and, um, you know, hair, makeup, and wardrobe was all packed into this little room that was Humble directly yeah. beside where we were filming. So between action and cut, which was pretty much the entire day because we filmed the whole season in four days, mm -hmm. 50 pages a day. People had to be extremely quiet and not even move. Otherwise, you could hear yeah, it just all like, because yeah, it's it like filming everything. in this like yep. creaky old house. <laughs> and so hair and makeup would be like trying to get things switched over for the neck. Like it was just so chaotic, but it was really, it was fun. Like it felt like this homemade project. And yeah, just, just like a super like intimate thing, you know, yeah. like that you were doing with your friends, like not knowing what was going to happen, yeah. but hoping for the best. Yeah. And, and well, the nicest part is, um, yeah. None yeah. of us actually, uh, none of us knew each other when we first worked together, but we became friends what? throughout working yeah. on it. Yeah. Just, uh, you know, like a side note, their chemistry is great. I don't know. I don't know if I believe them right now, but you guys like had no idea. You guys just like went out for the role and then it went like that. Yeah. The first yeah. time we met was in our callback yeah. audition. And it was funny because the scene that we auditioned with together first was the scene where our characters were meeting for the first time as well. Mm -hmm. So there were definitely some interesting parallels, but I, I mean, like for lack of a better word, I'd say. It was just magic. Like it's, it's like it sounds cheesy, but no. there's something so <laughs> magical when you find uh, that chemistry between two actors. For sure, and I don't. Yeah. I feel like it doesn't happen that often. So like everything in its right in its right place, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, we really, really lucked out for. You know, we were at the start of our careers, really, when when Carmilla first came out, and um, being able to start out a career with that great of an experience and with cast members that everyone got along and worked so well together and had such a love and affection for each other um you know we set the bar really high for ourselves and it's probably just all downhill from here but uh <laughs> no, um no like we really did we just totally lucked out with each other and uh and had such an amazing you know um launch pad into yeah. this into this career that we're both in and i mean you have such a receptive audience too mm -hmm. i mean it's been just you know the fan base and wh like how how you've grown and like how the popularity has changed you know to the point yeah. where you get to make a movie and have it on full screen i mean yeah. there's just been so much love and support which is which is awesome right yeah and and really we wouldn't have been able to make the film without the fans like they funded a third, a of, third of the yeah. film and really pushed every year and were really vocal. Vocable. Vocable. They were really, that's a new <laughs> word, by the way. Uh, they were really vocal about how how much they connected with the with the story mm -hmm. and with our characters and, and um, how important it was for them to have queer representation, positive queer representation in the media and and were really a voice behind, you know, getting the series to keep on coming back and then eventually get made into a feature film with a bigger budget. And, um, it's been really, really fantastic. And they're just the most wonderful, supportive, positive fans. Like that's yeah. always what we hear. Yeah. Is it? Yeah. I mean, we haven't had the chance to really experience other fandoms, but we've been told that we have one of the best ones yeah. ever. Maybe I'm biased. But. <laughs> Wait, who uh, told you that? Just 
Just like word of mouth. <laughs> word on the street. Word, word on the street. Have, uh, no, because I was gonna really say because I yeah because I mm-hmm. because I heard it as well. So mm-hmm. yeah. maybe we heard it from the same person, and maybe the Probably. word on the street is real. A little bird. Well, everybody yeah. knows each other in Canada, so no. I'm yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so did you guys both, uh, Natasha? You play Carmilla. Mm-hmm. Um, did you specifically go out for that role, or were you? Did you want to be the lead, or vice versa? I mean, uh, to be Laura, vice versa. Oh no, I would never <laughs> you get knew? cast as Laura. And I know people. Yeah. I know people don't know what. I look like right now potentially but uh, just google me and then watch the show google me <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> definitely this is not the face of Alora. um no i i saw the breakdown for carmilla and the role immediately spoke to me and that was the role that i wanted to audition for um did you like always ever want to play vampire though? i did yeah yes, i did awesome. as well i mean that was a bonus i mean when i first read the character description it didn't say that she was a vampire it just yeah. described her as a person mm-hmm. and i even, didn't know that actually yeah and even that description was was uh, so um, fantastic just because it was so developed because so often, um, you know, especially, I mean, it's changing now, but so often for female roles, they're, you know, just like pretty and, and of course, yeah. you know, that's, it'll yeah. be like three descriptors. Um, so I loved the characters were so developed and it just looked like such an interesting female driven show. So I called my agent and I said, can you get me an audition for this show? It sounds really neat. And I didn't really know much about digital series or web series at all. I mean, yeah. I was not really familiar with the YouTube platform yeah, I mean, when I started. Um, so I had no idea what it could become and what, what it could blossom to. And I'm, I got so, uh, so lucky. Um, I think I'm the only person in the cast who actually auditioned for my role and that's the role I am. I think I auditioned yeah. for every role but Laura. <laughs> yeah. Really? Yeah. I first went in, I think my first audition. You went in for Carmilla. Yeah, I went in for Carmilla and then I went in for Sarah Jane and then also Betty, I feel like. Mm. Those are characters from the, from the first season of the show. Um, yeah, or did I... Perry? No, I didn't go in for Perry. I Yeah, so I, I auditioned for many other characters and then, um, and then got called back for Laura because I walked into the audition with my bike helmet and backpack and so That's as so a sexy good. vampire <laughs> <laughs> hey guys yeah <laughs> i'm here to bite you yeah. um but no i mean going back to what you were saying uh, natasha i think that's great uh that that you know that they didn't full out say it was a vampire because you're right it's not about this person's a vampire it's a character and oh you know she happens to be a vampire that's just one mm-hmm. aspect of her yeah and her which personality which i thought was really neat yeah. because it's the same thing about um carmilla and laura being lesbians it's just one facet of their personality it's mm-hmm. not it's not their, their entire it's not defining it's not what yeah. the shows yet yeah. yeah and actually in the breakdown it never specified their sexuality either mm-hmm. which is the great thing about the show yeah. is that it just ne- it was just another fact it it's not another... trying to be something it's just yeah, being yeah. a show like, that just yeah. it tells a good story yeah and, and i think that's great too to be because gay. then as actors everyone who came in didn't have any tropes or ideas <laughs> in their mind i can just you imagine know? like even three years ago you say on a breakdown that a character's a lesbian and walk into an audition room and like half the people are in plaid and like like, you know what i mean like i've seen so many like i've gone out for other things where i go into the waiting room and it's all these actors that i'm just like oh my god just trying so hard to look like what they think a lesbian looks like instead of just going in as themselves as a a woman yeah like it's crazy and i i just want to read this stat too uh because I just find it fascinating. In 2016, 105 new script shows. Only 34 lead characters out of 1,936 were lesbians or bisexual women. And 13 of the 34 were killed in the series. Yep. Wow. It's- and then the ones that aren't killed are evil, manipulative, home-wrecking, awful right. people. Or just it's like, yeah. very difficult to, to find um, yeah, queer female characters that get to be the heroes and get to have a happy ending and get to have the girl at the end and I think that's part of why Carmilla resonated with so many fans because they were finally getting the representation that they need and deserve mm-hmm. so deserve it's, for yeah, sure it's been such a gift to be able to provide that as an actor yeah I mean just to like just to be part of something yeah too, to get yeah. to like do yeah. what you love and play pretend for a living and then on top of that actually make a difference in people's lives I yeah. mean it, it's really hard to top that and I'm, I think it is moving forward like I think there there is starting to be more um more positive representation more accurate representation but <clears throat> But a lot of those characters um, are still not the center of the story. And mm-hmm. so, and that that's something that we realized this year is that, 
you know, Carmilla is still unparalleled in the sense that the two heroes of the, or the two leads are are in the same sex relationship, which is something that you still don't see a lot of the times. It's a side story. Yeah, it's like a of side course, story, yeah. or or even it's now, like I think a lot thing, of you know, it's yeah, like, like yeah, yeah, a lot of producers are starting to catch on. Like, oh, maybe this is a popular thing that we can make money on, which we previously lied about for. And can I just say, I could be wrong in this, but I feel like Hollywood in general is running out of stories because it's always <laughs> the same lead. It's always the same. Or we're thing. just bringing back all of exactly. the old shows and exactly. movies, exactly, like remaking things. Look, <laughs> as a cinema nerd, and you know. As someone I watch everything I try I just think I agree with that um, and you know it's all about equal opportunity it's just there's so many stories that can be told and we limit ourselves to mm-hmm. you know what we think people want to see but it's just not true it's just and that's the funny yeah. thing is like who's making these rules of of what we assume you know who's making want. the rules it's yeah the, it's <laughs> yeah. the old white guys <laughs> but like I think I think yeah, I, who was it? There was an actor who said that, um, I think it maybe was Olivia Wilde, was saying that, you know, audiences are smarter than we give them credit that, yeah. for. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They want things that, like, we we put judgment on audiences and we say, oh, well, people don't want to see that. And, oh, it's, it's too real. People just want to yeah. use media to escape, which I think is true. And I mean, there is a place for that. But... You know, for the thing that I dedicate my life to, which is acting, I <laughs> have a hard time digesting the fact that people use something that I put my heart and soul into as a means to escape from reality. Like, yep. I want to use television and media and movies and film to yep. bring people more into reality to say, hey, here's the truth of the world that we're all trying very hard to neglect. Mm-hmm. And... um yeah, so I, I think I think audiences want that too, and yeah. I think the content that is coming out, especially in the digital age, especially with Netflix and other streaming services, that you know people have a little more creative control over what's being brought out, and mm-hmm. um, and showrunners have a little more say in in what doesn't get cut um, out of <laughs> scripts. I, I think you know I think the content that is starting to come out is reflecting that as well. Yeah, sure. I think I think you gotta have the balance though, like to not to argue or play devil's advocate with you, but I do think that people want to escape as well because the reality is, I mean, sci-fi is very popular. Vampires aren't real. People like that element yeah. of it. And then also, I mean, I mean, the reality is it's still really difficult for a lot of people to come out and it's still really unsafe for people to be queer and and we don't ref- we don't show that on Carmilla. So mm-hmm. that's not necessarily reflective of reality, but I think um, it's a wonderful escape for our fan base. And then it hopefully we'll also change the reality as well. So yeah, hopefully absolutely. as more parents and straight folk watch the series as well, they might say, hey, this is a great show. And and, and look at these great characters. They're great people. Yeah. And yeah. oh, they just and, happen and to that, be gay. That is, yeah. that is reflecting reality in the sense yeah. that like, you know, uh, our, our show is... is peering into the possibility of what a mm-hmm. world yeah. could look it's like. It's not telling yet. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I it's not is, It's not preaching. It's not doing anything but just showing you a world where this exists yeah. and you have to accept it. You know, yeah. it's not trying to make a statement, but it is a statement in itself. Yeah. Number one. And number two, I mean, I'm just the biggest proponent of equal opportunity. I think people who have these stories to tell and like this different perspective should be able to tell that, you know, should be able to write it. And mm-hmm. I think that's what gets lost so much in, in content. You know, mm-hmm. the same people are making the same stuff mm-hmm. and they only have their perspective and it's so hard to write a character when you don't know and you don't take the time to learn um which i think you know why this is just a great example of something which is why we need directors and producers and writers and showrunners of all different walks Mm -hmm. of life because one story can't can't be everything like one show can't you know reflect the entire world but what we're doing is like putting a unique every show has a unique voice and we need all of the different voices to be heard. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, for a show to try and be everything for everybody is just impossible. But I think it's, that's why it's so important to really know what your voice is and what contribution you're making to the world and what you're bringing in. And I think our, our show does that so well, or our our movie now, I think our movie (laughs) does that so well is like, you know, we know what our voice is and, and we're not afraid to, um, to really let that specific voice be heard for the, and, you for know, sure. it's not, it's not, uh, it, it, like no, no movie can be, can reflect the voice of every single person. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, 
And I mean, but, it's not mm. like you guys are just, you know, coming out saying, hey, we're making a movie. I mean, you guys have built on this show. You've built on the characters. You've gotten your fan base. So, you know, it's not like this is coming out of nowhere, you know? This mm-hmm. is just, this has just been building on, e- on each other and just building a world. Yeah. Which yeah. is cool. I know. It really is. It is a world. Like, I, I feel so lucky to be part of something that's, that is very much a, like a phenomenon. It's vampires, yeah. too. It's like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, vam, you know, vampires are always fun. It's fun to, you know, it's it's fun to leave the real world for a little bit, too, you know, and, like, just get engrossed in something that, you know, isn't real in, the, you know, in every day, but, you know, yeah. you, can, you can, like, imagine totally. it. Totally. I do yeah. think, I, and, and what I love about Carmilla as well, though, I mean, I think we're making it sound, you know, maybe more serious than it is. It's also very funny. Mm-hmm. It's very entertaining, and it's very funny. And I have this theory that, you know, when times are bad politically and there's a lot um, going on in the world that's very negative. Um, I think that's when things that are very charming and funny do thrive. And then oftentimes when we're in a, uh, and this is just my personal theory, but I think oftentimes when we're in a more positive political place, that then that's when dramas sometimes thrive. Like, we always I don't need know. drama. Yeah. We always need I know. drama. But I could be like, I could be wrong, but I kind of have this theory that it's yeah. like, because for example, you know, um, just even, you know, seeing uh, so many musicals come out now and little things like that. Like, I think, um, you know, people, yeah, people need to laugh as well. So I like that Carmilla does both. Like, it has the balance. Sure. It's like it's got this, it's creating positive social change and it, it does have mystery and adventure and action and suspense and a little bit of drama. But, you know, it, it's done in a way where it's not coming from the relationship between the two women. The drama is coming from the fact that they're fighting evil. Yeah. <laughs> <In the world. laughs> um, I just find it interesting, too, just kind of going off that point. Um, I mean, we've just moved to an era where you don't see many sitcoms anymore. You know, it's not about, like, the irony of humor. It's more about having comedy with heart, you know? It's about yeah. family-driven. Yeah. It's it's That's about character-driven stuff. Yeah. Um, you know, because it was, like, the, you know, like, the early and, like, mid-90s and stuff. It was all about... Very slapstick. You know, exactly, yeah. slapstick. You know, yeah. like, saw the, the Seinfelds, like, you know, they didn't learn anything each episode. It was just, <laughs> you know, it was just funny situations. Oh, but now... <laughs> of course, of course. I mean, you know, it's the backbone for everything that yeah. we love. Yeah. But nowadays, you know... Just all the TV shows, you know, they're, they're like these half-hour comedies or however long they are mm-hmm. that not only have humor but they have heart and yeah. it's about the yeah. characters and you yeah. laugh because, yeah. you know, you experience things with the characters. Yeah, and I think that's really where true comedy mm-hmm. is born from is yeah. like... Learning to the, laugh and the... L- yeah. Like laughing at ourselves <laughs> yep. and yeah. like like when I watch something and I laugh, it's a laugh of recognition. It's a laugh of recognition of my own <laughs> silly human <laughs> behavior of like, oh my gosh, yep. I do that thing that yep. they're doing. And so, yeah. Just being like a little shameless. Yeah. yeah just, and we and I laugh. like a funny script. I love our script. Yeah. So oh, no. I was just going to say, I just <laughs> usually laugh when someone says poop, but that's just me. <laughs> poop jokes are funny. I mean, yeah. They're all, they're all still funny. Yes. Don't get me wrong. Um, all right. So I want to talk a little bit just about like your characters individually. I mean, how do you, uh, first of all, how do you prepare uh, as Carmilla? How do you prepare to be a vampire? Like, what are like the steps that you take? The steps that I take. Um... Drink a lot of human blood. No. Yeah, I sacrifice <laughs> a lot of people. Um, no. Uh, well, it's funny. I'm, I'm someone who's very attached to wardrobe, oddly enough, or costumes. And I think it's because I come from a theater and a music theater background. Mm-hmm. But I find that when I wear a character's shoes, it helps me become a character. Because um, you really do... Like, literally wear their shoes? Like, literally wear their <laughs> shoes. It sounds so bizarre, but I really feel like... No, I can feel Depending that. on what we're wearing, we carry ourselves differently. So, mm-hmm. even the way that I, Natasha, walk down a red carpet when I'm wearing a long ball gown is different than Natasha lounging here in a in ripped jeans. For sure. You know, and, and so... Um, yeah, for me, like I, I had, I had this pair of biker boots that I, I used for my audition, and they became Carmilla's, and I've worn them yeah. like throughout the whole Every thing. Season, yeah. And now I can't wear them as Natasha anymore. It's so funny. Um, it's a pretty good sacrifice, though. I know. That's yeah, it. yeah, they're they're Carmilla's biker boots. But I, um, and then I also find that uh, because she's so ancient, I mean, she's about uh, when the movies takes place, she's about. 340 years old. So I I sometimes would purposely um, deprive myself of sleep because I found that she's she's very languid and she's very um, just kind of tired all the time. I mean, she's surrounded by infants, (laughs) all these 20 year olds who are just children to her. Um, So yeah, sometimes I'd I'd make myself a little bit tired and also because it it modulated my voice a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's got a bit of like a growl to her. I can see that. Yeah. yeah. The only time it's acceptable to go to work really tired. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, so those are like little things I did to get into Carmilla. And then also just even as, um, 
as two people who play on screen loves, I think Elise and I would make sure that we spent time together and yeah. would sometimes just have lunch before we'd go into rehearsal and not talk about work and just talk about life so that we could uh, feel that we had um, a connection. Yeah. Um, I don't, like, for me, I don't have one particular acting method. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes I do things that are a little bit method. Sometimes I do do things that are a little bit Meisner. I mean, I think it's important to be grounded and, and present and, and to do what just works for you as well. Um, so I would definitely take a lot of time to myself on set. I wouldn't be as like bubbly and, and quirky and funny as I am on some other sets when I play Carmilla because she is very um, pensive and mm -hmm. a bit of a loner. So I kind of like, you know, take time to just breathe and chill in yeah, the corner yeah. and yeah, just like observe become, people. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah just like, you know, go inwards a little bit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so how about you for uh, Laura? Um, I, th I think a lot of my work comes from you know, making the the personal choices and knowing, I mean, a lot of the work that I do as an actor just in general is about, you know, uncovering who I am and uncovering, admitting all the petty human things that we don't like to admit about ourselves of course, yeah. and getting off the noble train and being like, oh yeah, I do that and I do that, I do that. And, um, and then, you know, putting that into, to the script and, and making sure I know, uh, what the behavior is and why why she's doing the things that yeah, she's doing. Yeah, just and, like understanding. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Just understanding where she's coming from yeah. at that point. Yeah, yeah. And, and I think, you know, it, it's true that when you reveal the thing of a personal nature, then you reveal the thing of the universal nature. So if I reveal how I am in a situation, I'm going to reveal the whole human race of For how sure. we collectively deal yeah. with those things. Um, and then that can be translated into any character. Um, makes him uh, makes him relatable, right? Yeah, because yeah, everybody yeah. goes through all the emotions and all the feelings that you think you know yeah, totally. are so personal to you. Yeah, I know, and that's <laughs> the, that's the thing that I think a lot of actors hate admitting is that we're just normal. Yeah, we're just humans too. There we go. <laughs> like, like my pain is not any greater than your pain, mm -hmm. and my you know entitlement isn't any greater than or deeper than your you know all those things that we don't. <laughs> it's just like yeah. oh, oh, it's just like the secret that I think I've kept hidden from everyone, like yep, everyone, knows, yeah. everyone does that and everyone <laughs> deals with it the same. Oh God. <laughs> I'm just a mortal. <laughs> yeah. No, we're all just, you know, we're all just trying. A mortal, not immortal. Oh okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's Carmilla. Yeah, <laughs> not to be confused. <laughs> you can die in, yeah. in the boy, in real life. Anyway. I can't. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> She's, yeah. I mean, that must make you pretty jaded, you know, just, <laughs> Just never dying. Oh, I'm it's exhausted. Such a strange <laughs> thing. To yeah, me. it's crazy. It's it's crazy. Ugh. I mean, that's why like I find uh, the vampire stuff so fascinating because it's mm -hmm. just like, you know, you see a vampire as one age, but you don't, you know, age is but it is a number, but you know, you're how old mm -hmm. were you again? You're 200, like 300, 340. It's yeah, it's insane. Like yeah. you know, you live this life, but you don't change physically. So people see you one way just based on how you look. But you're yeah. just, you just have all these years internally yeah. of just yeah. shit, you know? You've seen everything. Yeah. That was one of my th uh, favorite things about the movie and the storyline is that, you know, Carmilla at the beginning of the film is a human again, uh, which happened at the end of season three where mm -hmm. we left off the web series. And, you know, having Carmilla go from this place of having her entire life ahead of her and never seeing an end to yeah. that, to all of a sudden having a, a clock mm -hmm. and the paralyzing fear of that, of, of all of a sudden being like, oh, I have to, like, I can't waste time. I can't, like, I have, all of a sudden time has Life an entirely finite. different yeah. meaning. Yep. And how, you know, it's like but in this really like taking the human experience and like making it the deepest, like, it's like, Oh my god! Because yeah. every human deals with that of like isn't knowing that what that we I, have... I don't want to get like too deep into it, but like <laughs> isn't that what makes us human? The fact that we are aware of uh, our of own that there's an end point. Yeah. 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 Well, I think I mean it's interesting though because Carmilla doesn't really race to do stuff with her life. Yeah. Though, at the beginning of the film, got all the time in the world. Yeah, it's been it's been. I mean, but she's a human. So um, yeah. for those who haven't seen it, she becomes a human again at the end of season three. Mm -hmm. And what propels the action of the film is that she starts to show signs of revamping. So for the first, you know, 20 minutes of the film, she is a human, and the film takes place five years after the series ended, so we kind of see what she's been doing with her life for five years, and and I was a little bit surprised that she hadn't been doing more, but then in fairness, I mean, she had been immortal for so long that 
um, you know, she, I think, was a little bit lost and maybe didn't know it's kind of overwhelming what too. to do yeah. with yeah. it. Yeah, and she was just trying to enjoy, you know, the more gluttonous aspects of life. So <laughs> sunshine and chocolate and, you know. Her sunshine and chocolate. Hot girlfriend. What's better? Yeah. yeah. Um, but, yeah, Another I think. Song. Yeah. <laughs> sunshine, so. chocolate, and hot girls. And, Yeah. All my favorite things. Um, <laughs> yeah, but uh, but yeah, it was interesting to see that um, you know she wasn't really uh, going moving after, forward, yeah. or doing too much. Yeah, but, but what but is so then, what then, is doing? You know, like what is that? Yeah, like, yeah. You know, like what, what is it like seeing? You know, like seeing statue. I don't know. Like <laughs> you know, like seeing, like seeing. You know, like things in the world or like going right. places or yeah. like what what constitutes that? I mean, yeah. And I think that's what constitutes what, life living. That's where a lot of people get stuck. Is like I, yeah. I know that I have a limited time. Am I doing I, enough? Am I like, doing? Yeah. And then yeah. we in that place Seen end up statues. not making any, <laughs> any decisions. Choices. Yeah. You yeah. know, I'd love to see some Michelangelo. That'd yeah. be amazing. You know, yeah, like seeing the Mona Lisa. I haven't done that. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. Am I living life? I told you I haven't even been out of the country. I mean, am I living... <laughs> It's a, exactly, it's I know. No, it's an interesting topic. I, I mean, it's something, it's it's something to explore, which is, yeah. which is awesome. So I mean, so your character. I mean, did you have to play something any different for that? I mean, going from you know what what you were doing in the series to the movie jump. I mean, yeah. Well, I think at the beginning of the film, I mean, and, and at certain points throughout it, I played her a little bit lighter than yeah. she was in the in the series because she was. I mean, she's still very sarcastic and very dry, and and you know. But I think uh, she at first is very happy with her her human life and she's having a great time and and she's happy that she also doesn't have to worry about her partner dying and growing old and and you know like now they can have a nice normal human life together um and uh but then i had to play her with some some great fear and worry about uh turning back into a vampire yeah. and um yeah carmilla does some not to to spoil the plot but she does some very uh noble cool things and really steps up in the film and um yeah, it was just so such a blast to get to step back into her biker boots, so to speak. Uh, it's all about the biker boots. Yeah, all about the biker boots. <laughs> it all comes uh, back to that. Yeah, but it was so much fun to uh, to play her again. I, I really do love her. That's so exciting. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, like, uh, you know, past the, the Carmilla movie and everything, I mean, what else have you guys been up to? Uh, you have, like, anything else that you're working on you want to talk about? Like, just chilling in Canada? Just, <laughs> just, wanna, just <laughs> enjoying, chilling. enjoying that health care. Um, just chilling in Canada. <laughs> Just I just go to doctors all the time. <laughs> just, that's what I do every day. I do week. too, but I just like wait outside waving like someday. Maybe. <laughs> One day. Maybe. Um, no, yeah. <laughs> just chilling in Canada, making oh, stuff. That's so funny. Um, no, well, I uh I I currently host the uh channel that Carmilla series played on originally, um, Kinda TV, and I'm developing a web series um, that'll air on that channel called Clairvoyant, Claire with an E. Um, where it's about two girls who pretend to be psychics to pay their rent, and then my character finds out she's actually psychic. Um, mm -hmm. But it's a very mm -hmm. absurdist mm -hmm. comedy. And um, and then, of course, I mean, we did this years ago, but for those who, who like our work together, we also have a film called, called Almost Adults out on Netflix that we both star, and we play best friends instead of lovers yeah. this time. Um, we so did is this like a prequel to... To, to uh, Carmela? <laughs> no, 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 not at all. It's funny. We shot it. No, I'm, I'm just kidding, yeah. <laughs> we, sh we shot it while we were doing a season two of Carmela. Um, so the characters yeah, are it's... super different, and we did it years ago. So it's yeah, but that chemistry different. was still there. I mean, you know, you mm -hmm. guys built it up from from the uh, show. Yeah, so. yeah, it was cool to explore a different relationship between us. Yeah, on screen. yeah. yeah. Well, dude, congratulations on uh, continually working. Yeah, right. Seems like you know. Seems like you guys <laughs> have fun. So you guys like hang out post you know post acting <laughs> and stuff. You guys, you guys are friends. We are, yeah. We get to travel together a lot, it's which amazing. is really yeah. nice. Yeah, it's a good thing we get along because uh, <laughs> <laughs> we're always like a lot of the times when we hang out, it's under high pressure situations or it's you know within a flurry of media buzz or, yeah, or exactly. movie buzz, yep. and um, and so it kind of is like constantly traveling with someone, which is always. Like I've it's your buddy. traveling yeah. with people is very difficult. Yeah. Oh yeah, <laughs> sometimes you could be best friends with someone but like, not be able to travel with them. You and, know, it's yeah, a completely yeah, totally. different thing. And I feel like often I'm very um, hangry around mm. Natasha in the in the sense yeah. that like we're always like on these long <laughs> days and yeah. don't get to eat maybe for you know if you and then there's I'm like, like a granola bar in my purse <laughs> right now. Yeah. I usually I now know to travel yeah. with snacks. I know. So if she starts acting so up, we, just feed her a granola bar. If you hear some chewing, just uh, we're just we're just getting her back to normal. Oh man. 
<laughs> yeah. You, yeah, you're like the embodiment of that uh, Snickers commercial. You're not you when you're hungry. Exactly. Mm. Or maybe you're your true self when you're hungry. <laughs> I don't like thinking about that because I am not. Uh, maybe it all gets revealed. It's all coming full circle now. I actually, I hate everybody. I just want to eat and be left alone. Just want to sit in the dark corner. Just super primal. Complain about everything. <laughs> Um, so, uh, last question I want to ask you guys, uh, individually, obviously, but, uh, like, what, is there, like, uh, a role or, like, something that you want to do, like, in the future, like, a future goal, future dream, um, you know, would it be, like, to be, like, a director, maybe make a music, I don't know, make a song, make an album, I know we were talking about music earlier. I'm actually, I'm actually, <laughs> I would love to... I would love to make a visual album. I think they're so amazing. Like, I love, well, I love Lemonade, obviously, but I, um, uh, Florence and the Machine also had Mm -hmm. a really great, beautiful, beautiful visual album. I love mixing, um, Mm -hmm. mixing video and, and music and, uh, that would be rad. Maybe at one point. It's epic. Like, it just makes it, it makes it epic. It really does. It's so great. But I also, I mean, there are so many roles and stories that I'd love to be a part of. Um, I'm a big fan of The Handmaid's Tale. Started watching Trans- so good, so good. Yep. Um, started watching Transparent this also year. So really good. loved that. Uh, loved a show called Big Little Lies. So good. Oh man, we're like so wait, on the wait, same wait, wait, train. Wait, this I is just, great. That show won like <laughs> what, like three or four Emmys. Did it? I, yeah. I don't know. Oh, I, yeah, no, it won a bunch of Emmys. It's yeah. definitely not like, unknown, yeah. Yeah, I think, the, and uh, that's really the career I want. I, I mean, Nicole and Reese, who produced and created this show and brought on these other females that they wanted to work with, and then, mm-hmm. you know, they would then in turn dream, recommend yeah. other people that they wanted to work with. That's really what I want to do. I want to have a big career, and I would love to, you know, have bigger paychecks and, and have all of that, but then also use that to create the projects that I really want to be a part of. Yeah. Because you don't actually get a lot of say in that I'm necessarily sure. yeah, yeah, as an yeah. actor. And so, um, yeah, I would love to learn more about producing and starting to produce my own work one day. Cause, I like that. Yeah. yeah have a How about look. you, Natasha? Yeah, I think it's important to, for me anyway, to set goals for myself, but I, I'm never... Um, terribly specific about what those are. Like, I'll set them for the year or I'll set mm-hmm. them for the month. But when I ever get asked, like, where do you see yourself in five years? I don't know how to answer that because five years ago, I wouldn't have never... That is that is a terrible question. ...seen too. myself yeah, no. here. I mean, <laughs> I didn't even know what web series were, let alone the fact that it would propel my career forward. I mean, I was a very traditional actor. I came from the stage. I came from musical theater. Um, You know, I thought that I would start in film and television first. Um, And so who knows where I'm going to be in the future? I mean, I hope that I'm continuing to play characters that do resonate with people, that do continue to create positive social change. Um, But I want to leave my heart open to the universe because I feel like if I and, and I mean, it's um, perhaps also a way of protecting myself as well, though, because I feel like if I make really specific yeah. goals mm. and they don't turn out the way I planned, it's you know, tough. Yeah. Um, I just want to be able to sustain myself off That's creative the thing, work. You have to set the bar super low, so anything that <laughs> yeah. happens, you're like, yeah. I just hope that I make it out of bed and don't spill food on me one day. That's my. <laughs> I already failed that yeah. today, so. No, but um, I, I mean, I am very, very driven. I am, I am producing my work, own work already now, That's and, awesome. and, yeah, and yeah. I hope that I get to do it all. I mean, I, I also get asked often, like. Uh, you know, would you prefer to do drama or comedy? Because they're like, you're so funny. Or like, you know, why don't you do more comedy? And I'm like, yeah, I love doing comedy. Yeah, but like, yeah, right? let's do it all. Why not? Yeah. We live in a digital age where you can do it something is so like drop easy. of a hat too. Yeah. Yep. Everybody's a photographer. Everybody can write. Everybody mm-hmm. can make music now. Everyone can uh, v- uh, film things, you know. So I feel like um, I never want to limit myself. And I just want to constantly be creating. And I want to do whatever you know strikes my fancy in the moment sure. and, and and be open to the opportunities that come as well and i'm sure there will be opportunities that will come that'll say no that's not right for me mm-hmm. um but uh well i mean lucky for lucky. you you get to live forever so i mean yes you have a lot of time to decide time to do it all see all the statues <laughs> all the sta- all the sta- i don't even know what statues i want to see just There's, you know. What's the one I that popped in my head? Statue of Liberty. It's the only one I can think of. <laughs> Yo, I lived in New York for three years and I never saw. The I Statue lived in for I lived for two years and I never saw it. Yeah. 
Whatever. Well, whatever. You know what? It'll still be there, hopefully. Um, guys, thank you so much. Oh, thank for you coming so in. much. It was great thank talking you so to you. Much. Uh, everyone, check out Carmilla. Uh, you can check out the movie on full screen. Uh, the series you said is on. Is the, is the series on also full screen? Also on full screen. Also on full screen as well. It's all We're there. The Catch up. Yeah. Catch up if you haven't seen it. It's vampires. Yeah. It's these few lovely ladies. It's awesome. And it is called The Carmilla Movie. The not, Carmilla Movie. Not, not the movie Carmilla or. Carmilla the movie. Carmilla movie, the, yeah. The Carmilla movie. The, Carm the Carmilla movie. The Carmilla movie. Tongue Mouthful. twisters. Yeah. <laughs> cool, guys. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you. More music.